Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Come summertime, kids tend to put school behind them and concentrate on just about anything other than schoolwork. Many kids stop reading altogether in the summer, and that's a problem. Research indicates that students who don't read over the summer school break suffer from learning loss, putting them at a disadvantage when school starts back up in the fall. In fact, that same research shows that teachers spend up to six weeks reteaching material the students lost during the summer. That's where public libraries come in. Each year, West Virginia libraries provide summer reading programs that help keep kids fine-tuned for the upcoming school year and hopefully limits how much reteaching teachers have to do. On today's program, we look at Summer Reading 2019 and the kinds of programming available to West Virginia public libraries. With me now to discuss this year's program is Library Commission Youth Services Consultant, Lisa Hachesky. Lisa, thanks for being with us. I'm glad to be here. So tell me about this year's summer reading program. Uh, this year's theme is uh, Universe of Stories, which is related to space. Um, also, coincidentally, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing will happen in July. So I, I'm pretty sure that's why we're celebrating it this year. So there's a lot of fun things coming up for um, summer reading. What kinds of fun things do you have in, in mind? Well, I know uh, we have... Uh, a lot of STEM projects that the libraries will be putting out for their kids to do. So, and what are STEM projects? Um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big uh, push to get kids involved in um, these science-based programs. So there's a lot of that uh, going to be worked into uh, mm -hmm. some of the programs. And, of course, they're fun. and They get to make cool things like slime and, <laughs> you know, d different things like that. So Everyone loves slime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why are summer reading programs so important, do you think? Uh, they're so important, and as you said, the, the, the summer reading slide, um, or the summer learning slide, when uh, kids aren't in school, they're not thinking, focusing on education, so they're out doing whatever they're doing, and, and um, especially the lower income kids that don't get to go to summer camps and day, day camps, um, so they are kind of just hanging out, not doing anything. So the libraries can offer um, educational materials and educational programming for kids of all ages and um, they can come out and uh, they're actually actively learning and reading and, and uh, it's increasing their knowledge. So like you said, they won't have to relearn everything come mm -hmm. fall. What role does the uh, Library Commission play in the program? Um, we are a member of the CSLP, which is the Collaborative Summer Learning Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pay a membership fee to get access to their materials, which is the, where the themes come from. Um, and they create um, a yearly uh, manual based on the theme that's um, put together by librarians all across the country. And uh, as a part of the CSLP, we get all of their promotional materials. And then I go out, this year I got to go out and train the libraries on uh, things that some are reading and um, just give them resources. We have um, just ideas for um, activities. We have books that they might be interested in. The STEM, uh, there's a, uh, the um, Starnet Libraries has a STEM clearinghouse, and it's a website where librarians can go and type in a, an age group, a topic, whatever they want to do, gives them the activity, it gives them a book, it gives them everything that they need to do to, to produce uh, that program in their library. I know you put together uh, some media kits yes. and some toolkits for libraries in mm -hmm. the state to utilize. Yes, and that was also to help them promote um, their, their summer reading. A lot of them are you know, very small and, and they don't have the time to sit down and do that, so it's another thing that I try to do to help them promote their um, activities. You know, part of summer reading, obviously, are the, the summer reading lists. And mm -hmm. From when we were kids, we, we did those sorts mm -hmm. of things. How are the books selected? Do the libraries do them individually? Do you help along with those lines? It's a combination. It could be uh, the librarian, the libraries at the local level may do it. There's a reading list in all of the CSLP manuals that, that are compiled by the uh, libraries across the country. So, it, and then local folks might need specific books that their school districts um, want the kids to read during the summer. What are the age ranges for kids in summer reading programs? 
Um, it can go from little ones, uh, preschoolers, all the way to, to teenagers. And uh, the manuals have uh, sections. They have early literacy, they have children's, and they have teens, and they also have adults. So. I was about to say anything for, yeah. the, for your adult patrons. Yes, and it, it just depends on the library and how they want to um, implement the summer reading program. How do you utilize technology in some of the other formats that are available for summer reading? That's where I think things like the um, the clearinghouse, the STEM clearinghouse, comes in handy. It's a website that they can go on and get um, ideas for things other than books to use. So they can do, um, you know, make like I said, make slime, make rockets, make different things. So they're they're doing the hands on and they're getting the hand eye coordination. They're getting other things other than just just reading. So um, it plays a, a big role in um, what they do. They also can do. Um, make make things and and learn how to do like legos and and things like that how important was the library in the summer when you were a kid um i didn't really i, I hate to admit it i didn't really use the library in the summer as much as i used it during the school year to do research and things like that but i do remember one program growing up um I was a big um, I was big into sports cards, and one summer, one of the um, local people who put on all the sports card shows had if you brought a library book, you got in for free. And I remember going to the <laughs> library every week or every two weeks, however often the sports card shows were going on, to get my book so that I could get in for free. <laughs> but I ended up, you know, reading the books. It wasn't just uh, you know. <laughs> what inspires you about summer reading programs? I just, to me, it's it's so important for kids to, to love books. I was fortunate enough to get that um, at home, and my mom instilled that in me. And so I think for the p kids that don't have that at home, uh, going to the library and getting to see the excitement. And like this year, you know, you get to do all the space-related things. Mm -hmm. And so they may not, you may have some reluctant readers who don't really like to read, but then you have, oh, we get to make, you know, um, a telescope, well, you know, it's not a working telescope, but a telescope on a toilet paper, or we get to, you know, we get to take and make rockets out of balloons, or we get to do all these cool things so they can kind of see that um, libraries aren't just stuffy books, and I think that's, for me, that's what I, I, I like about summer reading. You know, as a youth services librarian, obviously summer reading is a big part of your job. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say are the biggest challenges you face as a youth services librarian? Right now, our big thing in the state is getting more teens involved. Um, when I was out doing my sessions, uh, that was one of the consistent uh, questions, or how do we get te teens involved? So that, that looks like that's an issue for us across the state. So that's one I wanna work on and uh, see how we can involve it because we're doing a really good job getting the little kids to come to story hour. We get the, the elementary kids in to, to read, but once they're, they hit that tween age, they just kinda go off to do other things and they don't think about the library until it's time to do a term paper or something <laughs> like that. So. What kind of ideas do you have? Um, well, I wanna get some uh, folks that are actually doing really good teen programming and talk to them and maybe get us uh, get a dialogue going between us and the, the, the folks that aren't doing as well and see what issues are, if there's a common uh, thread. I know bringing the kids to the library is always an issue, especially out in some of our more uh, remote areas. Just, uh, and, and just get ideas of why, why things are working, why things aren't working. That's, that's the biggest thing I wanna do. I just wanna get people talking about what's going on out there. I know uh, we recently visited with uh, uh, the Raleigh County Public Library. They mm -hmm. do a Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. event that gets a lot of teenagers, young adults uh -huh. into their doors. Yes, and things like that, because I just recently went to Jackson County and they were doing a mini con, mm -hmm. and it was so uh, inspiring to see all of the teenagers there. And so they're, they're there, they want to come. It's just finding a way to get them there. And I think things like the mini cons and Dungeons and Dragons Night or Magic the Gathering, just things that, that appeal to kids in that age group I think that's where, where we need to go. What advice do you have for public libraries as they try to roll out their summer programs? I think the, the good thing, and I've seen this happening a lot, um, is not so much focusing on number of books you've read, but um, the fact that they're just coming in and reading and they get, uh, South Charleston, they give tickets for, for books read, and, um, and they may read Harry Potter and that, 
you know, some places would say that's one book, but a book, uh, especially the later ones, are so thick, you know, they'll, they'll give them a couple extra because they've read a couple, you know, mm -hmm. more than what a normal book is. Mm -hmm. But just to, to not be so restrictive on, um, you know, you write a book, here you go, you know. So be more flexible. I think that's a, a good thing. What's the most important thing that you want kids and their parents to get from summer reading programs? What personally, I would like that they just get that love of reading and the love of library and a see library as a place to go, and not just a stuffy place with books. You know, to see the fun activities that they can do. Um, I want parents to think of place, think that as as a place to send them to, um, to have uh, another educational opportunity, not when they're not in school. So that's always, um, you know, just don't. It's not a babysitter. We, we can send them there to learn as well. So I think what's really mind blowing are, are the statistics talking about how teachers have to reteach mm -hmm. four to six weeks because yes. kids aren't going to the library and mm -hmm. aren't reading over the mm -hmm. summer. Yes, and that's one of the the biggest problems, especially the lower income students, and they can't make that up. So once they've fallen behind a couple of grades by fifth grade, they they can't make that up. So getting them out when they're young and getting them interested in reading, it will help them so much more in later uh, years and, and help them uh, have a really positive educational experience and uh, it, it distance the gap between the upper middle class kids and the lower income kids. It, it distance is that gap of uh, achievement. What's your vision for the future of summer reading programs? Well, I, I've been inspired by a lot of the folks that I got to meet um, this winter, uh, explaining how how this year's summer reading will work. So, I'm just I'm so excited to see all these people out here doing these wonderful programming ideas. So I just I want them to keep doing that, and I want more folks to get on involved. Um, I know a lot of times it's it's time or money or staff. We just don't have the time or money or staff to do it. Um, but a lot of places are doing it with uh, shoestrings. So I think that's, for me, that's, I want to encourage more people to do that. So if I see a little library somewhere doing this really great program, I want to say, hey, if they're doing it, you guys can do it. So I, I'm, I want to be kind of a cheerleader for summer reading and for, especially for the smaller rural libraries here in West Virginia. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Good luck this summer. When we come back, we'll take a look at an innovative program being offered by the Brook County Public Library. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but he's ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. One of the most innovative programs being offered in West Virginia libraries these days is offered by the Brook County Public Library, fitness classes. Library Director Alex Everly manages to fit fitness into her library programming schedule. It's good for the library, and for its patrons. Alex is with me now to talk about the program. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell me about the Brook County Library Fitness Program. So we've been trying to do fitness in the libraries since at least the five years I've been there. Mm -hmm. It's been a hassle. You try, you change time frames, you try bringing in somebody from a local fitness studio to do something, you have a really good response, and then it kind of fizzled out. We tried walking groups. That helped, and some people turned in their logs, but they didn't want to do it with us. They did it on their own, but we still got them active. Um, so we received an email, and there was this opportunity for a Jerry Fit program study. And Jerry Fit is this company that has, um, I guess you could say, uh, almost like the videos that you can watch that are you know already done. You don't have to have an instructor in front of it. You can just sit there and follow along. Mm -hmm. And they really wanted to try to get some of our older adults that might have mobility issues, mm -hmm. might not be able to do the intensive classes that other places offer, um, and see what would happen in libraries. So we applied, we got it great. I mean, mm -hmm. we were ecstatic. Um, and I should say my right hand, Kim Harless, is pretty much the person who then ran with it once we got the first hurdle done. Mm -hmm. So after we got that 
everything, you know, I guess you could say sign and dotted. You know, we had to do it so many weeks. But after today is actually the last day of our study class. Mm -hmm. And um, then we are going to be able to continue because we have a lifetime license and can use the videos anytime now. So we're actually going to continue it. And we've expanded it to our branch now in Fallensby. Well, that's great. How expensive is all this? Well, the first one was free. So obviously we mm -hmm. thought that something was going to be wrong because it said free. And we're like, yeah. People don't do that type of stuff for free. But we found out, no, there was no strings attached. We just had to turn in kind of a survey at the end of it. Hey, did you, you know, get anything out of this? Do you feel a little bit more limber? Um, and that was the only thing we really had to do, that and their ages. Mm -hmm. So we felt that was okay for, you know, to sign up for this but this next set we can continue using the um, license and the movies that we already had for the study for that class but we did have to it's almost like our movie license we did have to buy a, per, a separate one for a branch mm -hmm. so we did purchase that and we found out that february is the month that they do their sales mm -hmm. um normally it's like 150 dollars for the license um i think like 60 dollars per fitness video mm -hmm. um so we bought another one for the branch just to try it. We're going to try to, you know, build some um, foot traffic up there. I want to make sure that my, you know, my branch is always on the map that people know where it's at. So I would say for that set that we just bought, it cost us right about two ninety something to buy that. And we're actually going to ask our friends to purchase it. I just asked and requested the funds. So you can do that. But I was telling people, I mean, if you can't afford that, and that's a, a lot of money for us as well. Right. Go on YouTube, contact some of these fitness people, see if you can get, you know, permission to use their yoga videos. I did mm -hmm. receive permission from this one. I think it was like yoga with Adrian. Super helpful. She was like, go ahead and use it. And mm -hmm. so if you just try, find somebody, find somebody on staff. You don't have to be a fitness guru. Have a disclaimer that says, hey, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Try it out. You never know. It, it works for us. <laughs> Where do you hold the classes? Um, the ones in our main location in Brook County, um, or I should say in Wellsburg, is in our big meeting room. Um, we do it before the library is even open, so it's nice and calm. Early morning, they can come in, come out. Um, our branch, it will be in our um, meeting room up there. We do have a smaller meeting room, so we have, I believe, 20 to 22 people in our main location. and our branch, we can comfortably sit about 10. So it's going to be a smaller class, but I feel like an intimate setting is still good. They can grow, have a social atmosphere as well, but worry about their fitness, become better. And I would say we've had some really good patron feedback, but what is amazing is I've had, not including my um, program director, Kim, who sits in on the programs and does it with them. I have four staff members on one board meeting that member who attends by themselves out of library time and they are taking this time to become active and fitness, you know, and right. taking that track. So I feel like we're helping our community, but then I'm also making, you know, stronger strides with my staff mm -hmm. to help them live a more productive life and be a little bit more active because we're on our feet all the time. Right. So it helps them out. <laughs> um how do you get the word out? Um, we've done the traditional. Uh, we have our newsletter, so we email that out once a you know once a month. The newsletter is available for pickup at both you know circulation desks. We put it on Pinterest just to share with other people that might be you know finding or like searching for what they can because obviously a Pinterest is like a librarian's best friend. Um, and then we put it on Facebook. We boost some of those posts. Um, we didn't even have to do a very much PR because we sent out the newsletter in December 2018. The first, of we, it was uh, last week of um, November when we sent it out. And by the Christmas vacation where we're gone the last week of December, every single slot that we had available was done. That's great. So it, it's the weird one. We didn't have to do a lot to get it out there it clearly showed that this is what people want. Um, and we found out that other people can do these Jerry Fit classes and other like agencies have it, but they charge for it and ours is free. We don't want you to have to pay to come to the library, but we want you to see it as a community hub to get reading materials, maybe your viewing materials for the next best movie, some audio books, e-books. We want you to see it as like a one-stop shop, basically. Right. So uh, how many uh, slots do you have open so crazy enough, they stuck with it for the 15 weeks. And as of today, I think she only had like <clears throat> about two slots that were 
back and forth. There was a couple people that would miss one, but you could do some of the So how many things. total? Like, I think we had about 20, uh, 22 at one point. It was ridiculous because we were like, okay, we can't fit anybody right. else in this room. Our branch is going to have at least 10. We're going to play around a little bit, you know, try to fit them safely in the room. <laughs> it's not about numbers. It's really to make sure they have the arm space to do what they right. need. They feel comfy. And then if you have a lot of women and men working out in a room, I mean, that's going to start raising the temperature. So you don't want them to, like, you right. know, fall over on you. <laughs> what, what's your goal for the program? I think if we can sustain it and continue, we're going to start, um, I think it's either at towards the end of this month or next month, we're going to continue with this on. And if we can sustain this and at least have a consistent amount of people that are coming, that's our goal. Is if, if this program goes the distance, um, and we're going to try it at the branch and see if it goes the distance there, maybe it only works at our main location. So we're going to try. That's our goal is to just continue to do it and see where we're at by the end of this year. What's, uh, what's been the reaction from your board? <clears throat> um, I think one of my board members attended. So, I mean, I think they were, when, you know, when I told them, I'm like, okay, we're doing a new program and it's free. Just letting you know we're not signing right. on for anything. This is the restrictions. And they're pretty supportive. Anytime that, you know, we try to figure out what we can do for the library, my board's always been supportive and saying, okay. Let's try this. Are there any liability concerns? I would say there was in the sense that they're working out at the library. So Jerry Fit actually sent us a waiver that we had everybody sign. We're going to design our own since the study's done, and that was more for the study to protect the library and Jerry Fit. Mm -hmm. We're going to make our own. Mm -hmm. You come to the library and you utilize it, but you're doing it at your own risk, just like if you're visiting anywhere else in a public facility. But we want you to not feel like oh, you're signing your life away of saying, you know, mm -hmm. if you get hurt at the library, but because you're being active and you're taking a class, we're just going to make sure that there's a waiver in place that's protecting everybody. And then that way they kind of have a peace of mind as well. I'm coming here to work out a new story. You know? yes. What's your favorite aspect of the program? Um, I think the story that I have from one of my patrons, when we first were figuring this out, we were kind of, oh, okay, let's try to see if we can cherry pick a few people because we don't know if this is going to be very good, you know, mm -hmm. well attended. And we knew there was a patron. Um, she has one of the Walker um, seats. And very avid user, checks out books, if not weekly, um, you know, a couple times a month, always there. Uh, and we approached her about it, and she said, ah, you know what, my mobilities, it's, I don't have the strength, I can't do stuff. And we were like, listen, try. She said, okay. And she told him, she's like, I will come. She has been the faithful person <laughs> through all 15 weeks attending. She has a particular seat that she sits in because it's in a certain area that it has a, a table besides, so she has extra stability. A Jerry Fit has um, uh, modifications that you can do, so if you can't bend down all the way, you can kind of just do it a little bit. She is like one of our stellar pupils. I ask him all the time, and she's like, yeah. She's there doing it, <laughs> enjoying it. So that's the story is while we would love to have 20 great responses that's the person that I've always asked about because I know she said in the beginning I'm not gonna be able to do this and we said try and we have another patron who um, she's pretty much legally blind and has trouble and we're gonna try to bring her in on for the regular sessions and verbally tell her what's you know what to do because she's like Alex I've put on weight I, I need to do something I'm like Come on in, we'll get you going. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna work. So if we can modify it even more to help some of our patrons, that's our goal as well. I think uh, nationwide, the, the statistic is 23% of public libraries offer fitness programs. As far as you know, how does West Virginia stack up? I don't know if we have a particular like mathematical equation that says this is the data, but I know from just doing my presentation yesterday getting a kind of feel for what other libraries are doing. Some have incorporated yoga into their story times. Um, yoga and me, so the little ones are almost like the go yoga. The little ones are climbing on the adults as they're doing their yoga poses. Um, a couple others do just random, like, you know, um, story hour. Like, my library, we do the um, drumming on the 
background, so we've incorporated music and movement. And so there's the little ones and the other people that have tried fitness classes, like bringing in somebody to do it. Um, so the, the groundwork is there. I would say the grassroots is right there for us to try. It's now we're just stumbling along. What do you see as the future of fitness programs in libraries? I think it's almost like when computers came out. Computers are definitely going to be integrated into libraries. Fitness, I think, is the next thing. It, fitness and health is in our society, everything with food, organic. So if you have that kind of mesh in your library already in place, I think we'll be able to continue to sustain it because that's what our public wants. Do you have any advice for other libraries that are... They're considering starting up a fitness program. Patience. <laughs> well, like I said, we've tried for a couple of years to do something, and this is the first thing that seemed to work. Perseverance, just patience, um, making sure your ducks are all in the row, you have a safe place. You don't have to provide the items, tell them to bring their own weights or stretch bands, but just have a few key things in place for them. You have a waiver, you have a program, you've told people, listen, I'm not a fitness guru, but we're going to do this together and then you just try it. And then if you have to, move the dates, times, and then if it's a you know, fizzled out one, okay, you've done your due diligence, but we're surprised. We tried it and I guess the 50, 50 millionth time is the charm. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you look at this program going forward, how do you see it fitting in with all the other programs you have at the library? I think it's just adding a whole other component because do you think of libraries as a place to go get fit? It, maybe check out a book or check out the DVD to get fit, but I think the component for us now is it's an added level on top to do, but it's another adult program to get our community in the doors utilizing the library. And if that's the only thing that that patron is doing, is visiting to work out, I'm fine with that because they're still seeing the library as a place that's physically there and that they're, they can go there to you know, get fitness and socialize as well. Alex, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. We I appreciate, appreciate it. it. We'll have more on libraries today right after this. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. When the school bell rings for the first time in the fall, many students are playing catch up. Because they didn't do much, if any, reading during the summer, they lag behind their classmates who did. Research shows that kids who don't read or take part in educational activities in the summer experience significant learning loss, making a summer reading program one of the most impactful things a public library can do. And if those same libraries can also offer other programs, like the fitness classes offered in Brook County, they become an even more vital part of their community. I'd like to thank my guests for being on today's show. Library Commission Youth Consultant Lisa Hachesky and Brook County Library Director Alex Eberly. I'm Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.